15,678 miles, 116 days, 35 states, one very dusty Honda Civic. <laughs> this is the road trip that changed my life. This road trip started with one goal, for me to land a job as a local newspaper reporter. But it led me to much more. It led me to a new way of living. This road trip way of living is about having the guts to take that first step. It's about being open and embracing the unexpected. And it's about taking the time to slow down and reflect. Get on the road. Embrace the detours. Slow down once in a while. Let me tell you a little bit about life before this road trip. I left a good job in network television to go to journalism school in New York City. By 2003, I had graduated with a dream of becoming a newspaper reporter. But newspaper jobs were scarce in New York City, and as hard as I tried, I had no idea how I was going to get hired. I felt paralyzed, stuck in my shoebox-sized studio apartment in Greenwich Village, glued to my tiny IKEA couch. I was going nowhere. How was I going to get a job I had never been paid to write an article before? Had no published clips. No big New York City newspaper was going to hire me. I spent days, let's be real, weeks sitting on this couch in this New York City apartment, the rising heat of this New York City summer, and finally I had had enough of going nowhere. It clicked. What if, instead of reaching out to the big editors at the big papers, I reached out to editors in smaller towns, face to face? At a small town, I could be, have my, my own beat, my own byline. I could have my own voice. And so I prepared to hit the road. I took out a loan, I bought a car. Boom, I was committed. <laughs> Yeah, I bought a giant laminated map of the U.S. I put little yellow dots at each town that looked interesting. I would go south and then west. I'd be on the road for 18 days, or so I thought. I'll never forget that feeling of exhilaration as I drove across the George Washington Bridge, my new Honda Civic packed to the windows. I was exhausted from days of preparation, but thrilled to finally be on the road. Finally, I was moving forward. In life, we're taught to strategize, to be deliberate. Whether it's a job, a relationship, a new home, we really like to know what to expect. But sometimes, the best decisions we can make are based on no data at all. Sometimes you need to just push paralysis aside and just get moving. Just go somewhere, anywhere. Sometimes you need to just get on the road. So that's what I did. I followed that map. I went south, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia. I had my routine, I was gaining momentum, my process was locked. Reach out to those editors, plan those informational interviews, show up in town, check into the Motel 6, show up for the interview, and be ready for the inevitable questions. What are you doing here? <laughs> Why on earth would you leave New York City and network television? Do you really think this road trip is going to get you hired? I would work my charm as best I could, smile, 
shake hands, write thank you notes. I kept on moving. This was my plan, dot after dot on the map. Finally, I got to Tennessee, and the editor there suggested I reach out to the sister paper in Little Rock. But Little Rock wasn't on my original map. I had already made plans to go to Louisiana, Alabama. I had to get up to Missouri all within a matter of days. Little Rock would be an inconvenient squeeze. I'm not exactly sure why, but I ended up adding Little Rock to my agenda. A few days later, I rolled into town. It was late at night. I checked into the first hotel I could find. The next day, I was pleasantly surprised at the reception I got at the Little Rock newspaper. The editor there was younger than most I had met before. He had reddish hair, a broad smile. And when he showed me around this newsroom, its lofty ceilings and skylights, there was an energy to the place, the buzz of reporters working on deadlines. I sat down for an, an interview with that editor. He didn't ask the usual questions. He didn't think this road trip was such a crazy idea. In fact, he was impressed with it. He was impressed with me. He told me there were no available positions at the time, but he would reach out if anything <laughs> opened up. And finally, I felt like somebody appreciated my efforts. Finally, I felt like I was making progress and this detour was paying off. Sometimes the most amazing destinations in life are not on our original maps. When's the last time you ditched your Google Calendar and made time for something spontaneous? When's the last time you put down your iPhone long enough to have a conversation with a stranger? These opportunities for unexpected interactions are everywhere. They happen all day, dozens if not hundreds of opportunities to make these connections. It's up to us to be open to these opportunities, the meaningful ones, when they arise. That's how it is on this road trip way of life. You get on the road and you embrace the detours. So after Little Rock, I kept moving west. By then I was sporting pretty serious left arm tan. <laughs> And often I was driving for miles with nothing but static on the radio. I took this time to conduct my own sort of interview. I took my time to ask myself the tough questions. I realized this road trip was giving me the freedom to figure out what I really wanted. And I checked in to realize that I actually did want to live in a small town because I wanted to have a big impact. I wanted to make sure that I worked with colleagues who actually appreciated my experience. This is what I truly wanted, and after many more miles, many more interviews, I had found a new focus. In my final states, just the last few miles, I got a call back from that editor, the one in Little Rock who had been so impressed with me and my road trip. By then, there were no more questions in my mind. Yes, I said as he offered me a job as the new Little Rock crime reporter. <laughs> that sounds perfect. <laughs> Let's face it, even the most amazing road trips can be tedious at times. The roads can start to look the same, the Motel 6s, I can assure you are all identical. <laughs> but there's value in this monotony. Value in these long stretches. Value in having nothing else to focus on but what is right in front of you. Some people find these moments in long hikes or meditation practice. Some people find this time on a cross-country plane ride without Wi-Fi. 
the gurus call it mindfulness, taking the time for the present moment and your priorities. And for me, the road is my mindful place, my chance to slow down and reflect on what truly makes me happy. When it comes time for your next big life decision, remember this road trip way of life. Maybe you're feeling stuck, paralyzed, you don't know what to do next. What if you pushed the risk assessments aside and just got out there and just got moving? Maybe you're already rolling full speed ahead towards your final destination. You know where you need to go. Nothing will stand in your way. But if this is the case, ask yourself, am I on autopilot? Am I missing a chance for a meaningful detour? And every once in a while, pause. Just long enough to make sure that where you're headed truly feels right in your gut. It's up to you to make this time for the reflection, for the mindfulness, for yourself. Get on the road, embrace the detours, slow down once in a while. <laughs>